Hi everyone, we are here at Jitex 2022 where we are showcasing the limitless connectivity of 5G with our demos, with our customer that's been here over one day, two days now. We have signed press releases showing the partnership that we have with the key customers of the regions. We are meeting customers for deeper discussions on what's imagined possible for them. Here you can see the demos live with people watching and it's just a great event. Hi, my name is Carlisle Brito and I'll walk you through the demo of the holographic uh, communication. This basically is an application which will runs on top of our Ericsson 5G core, which basically takes communication to a, to a newer level. So traditionally, you will be uh, used to having a 2D representation of uh, you know, your team's meeting, wherein uh, you communicate with each other. But this basically gives you the spatial depth of, uh, of uh, an immersive experience, wherein uh, you could see the, uh, a true avatar representation on the other side. So, so the technology that uses a very basic uh, equipment, which you can buy commercial off the shelf in uh, in any marketplace. Uh, the, the the high requirements for high throughput is basically offloaded into the network, uh, and all the computing happens at the edge. Hello everyone, this is uh, some type of augmented reality games. This type of games was not possible to have before we had the 5G. 5G is critical when it comes to the augmented reality games. Why? 5G is having two many specific features, which are the very high download speeds and the very low latency. So we can play these types of games multiplayer, even in different cities, if the network is supporting 5G in near real time. So we will feel the competition between each other and they will play over the cellular network. In this example, for uh, uh, we have the basketball gaming where we have our friend here is playing basketball, he's aiming, he can see exactly what you see on the, on the screen here and he's aiming to the, to the hook and he can score. It can be played actually in multiplayer as well. So a lot of players, each one is, is having a ball and throwing it and the score at the end will show who is who's the winner. So this type of gaming was not possible before we had the 5G. 5G is the main enabler for this type of technologies. So you are enjoying it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matthias Koski from Immersal. We are part of Ericsson 5G startup program. We are creating different kind of AI experiences. You can gamify like football game, AR horse racing, you name it. And basically, nowadays you have 5G and Mac servers as well, so you have a high bandwidth and also low latency. Without this, you can't create this kind of next generation products. One other use case might be that you create your own personal metaverse, you just map the space, then you create your own content over there, you share with your friends and utilize the next generation 5G connection. Hi, my name is Sarthak Harsh. I am from the Network Solution team based out here in UAE. Today I am here to talk to you about how to monetize 5G. So we, we have heard from different CSP from across the world that they have invested a lot in 5G but they have not been able to monetize it back. Here what we are trying to do is we are trying to show how we can monetize 5G using dynamic slice selection. So with the evolution of technology, we are going to introduce standalone networks pretty soon to the network. And then once standalone networks are introduced, we can create different slices in the network, providing different performance, different KPIs, different LS, SLAs, higher capacity depending upon the requirement of different use cases. And based on these slices, the customer can charge premium subscription to its service providers. Let's take a couple of, one example, Okay, for example, Mira. She's, Mira is an office employee. So as every office employee has, we have a personal and a work profile in, built into our phone. What we can do is, the CSPs can sell a normal economy-based package for the personal work profile. And then for the work profile, what they can do is, they can sell a premium package and a real-time package. 
and they can build this premium or real-time package directly to the employer. So it will be much easier for the employers to reimburse their employees because now the device they will use will be for personal which will be built directly to the Mira and the work profile will be built directly to the employer itself. Taking one another example, Jenny. So Jenny is a college student. So college students do not generally like to pay that much for the broadband connection that they're using in their phones. So she can buy an economy package on her phone, but she's also a gamer. For gaming, she requires higher capabilities, lower latency, more capacity, so that the experience is good. So what the CSPs can do is, Jenny would buy a normal economy package for her own use, but for her gaming needs, what she can do is she can buy a subscription uh, for 50 hours or so, which can be a premium subscription or even a real-time subscription. For this package, the CSP can charge premium pricing to Jenny for limited number of hours. So Jenny as per her requirements. So for example, if she was doing browsing, surfing over the internet or anything, she can use her normal economy package. Whenever she, whenever she wants to do gaming, she can switch to this booster package, which will give her very good performance and she can do gaming very well. And she will be very happy to pay a premium price for this booster package. And this will help CSPs increase their revenues in a very large scale. Okay, looking at one another example, let's take the last one, Barry. Barry is an app developer. So what he does is, he's doing coding on his laptop every day, but he needs to upload a lot of information to the servers. So he needs to buy a premium package, which will give him enough capacity to do, for doing his upload needs. But the, he's developing an app for, let's say, controlling drones. So he also needs to test that app. He cannot test it on his premium subscription that he has today. He needs to buy a time-critical communication subscription, an industrial subscription, which will give him very low latency on which he can test the drugs. So once his app development and testing is completed, he will ship the drones or the software to the company which, for which he has developed the app. And the CSP, the industrial subscription which, which Barry was using, can directly sell this subscription to the company for which the app has been built. So it is a long-term revenue that has been generated for different CSPs. Welcome for the fixed wireless success uh, demo in our stand. So we are going to talk about the fixed wireless success reference case right now. Actually, this is in our case, we are going to talk about the Oman Tel success story when it comes to 5G FWA. So as we right to know that the FWA is a complementary solution to cover the households or the SMEs. And in the Oman's case, the Oman Tel was has a, had a challenge. Actually, they needed to provide connectivity to the end users, but we didn't have good fiber coverage there and we wanted to migrate the copper users because copper technology is an old technology. And on, and on the other hand, we wanted to use our 5G resources to monetize them. So what we did, we actually positioned these 5G base stations towards the end user connectivity. So there were two solutions basically. The first one was the technical part. So what did Omantel did quite successfully was, we provided this outdoor CPs uh, in a, you know, let me say, we could provide to the end users these outdoor CPs so that the, the, the end users will have the best connectivity towards the network. So this from the technical point of view. And then the second part is you can easily see that commercially these packages 5G was quite promoted compared with the 4G. So in the end what happened? We had this spectacular growth in the country. So as you can see this green graph is 4G FWA and the the orange one is the 5G. When 5G FWA happened, we migrated quite a lot of copper users towards 5G. And on the other hand, what we managed, this is a side effect, we offloaded 4G as well. So we just managed to see five times growth in one year for 5G connections. And right now, the majority of the connections are all running on 5G. So this is spectacular for 5G. And this FWA is doing for that once. And 
This is we are helping towards our customers, so everyone is benefiting from this. The industry is benefiting, the operator is making money, and also the country is also developing with use that one. So we really believe FWA is one of the best use cases for 5G, and we as Ericsson are here to glad to help you. So imagine possible. This is Ericsson's Breaking the Energy Curve approach. We are showcasing how our innovative holistic approach can reduce energy consumption on mobile network providers with 5G rollout. If 5G will be deployed as previous generations, this will increase the energy consumption on mobile network providers. However, with our holistic approach, we are addressing the whole network from hardware, solution and operating site infrastructure in order to reduce our environmental footprint, also reducing the carbon emissions and energy consumption while maintaining the quality user experience and managing the data traffic growth. Together, we are pioneering a sustainable future. Welcome, welcome, please. Hi, so we are, uh, we are presenting here our twist on the digital twin. Of course, you are aware of there are different definitions of digital twin. In particular, from our side, the interest in trying to bring reality at the edge, model it, and use this information in different ways, specifically for self-driving vehicles, for example. So let me give you an introduction. So what we do here, we have a very basic layout of the area where we are, so the Ericsson uh, booth here in uh, Jitex. And so due to space limitation, we couldn't bring our robot here. So we brought a virtual robot, which now lives only in the digital side, not on the physical world. And now, interesting enough, so one of the things that we can start to bring in the digital twin are connected devices, okay? So my colleague Marcus here has an iPad in his hand, it's a 5G iPad. Now when he moves the iPad, now the iPad is streaming information to the edge where we basically bring, fuse the information and then di di um, disseminate this information to the robot as well, right? How is it tracking the movement at this point? There is, well, no, there is actually... Uh, is the uh, iPad itself the share is accelerometer data, IoT data, basically in real time to the edge? Yes, yes. And this represents a bit the case, if you look at automotive, where you have a vulnerable road user with the phone sharing the position to a connected vehicle in some sense, right? Which is a great case of, of edge processing uh, uh, for safety, for example, but it's missing 90% of the problems, which could be children, animals, things that are dropped by trucks on the, on the way. So the idea for our, from our side was, can we capture everything and bring in the digital twin? And so and that's what we present here. Now, what you see, all these shadows represent all of us in real time. So here we are tracked by external sensor. We have two very cheap cameras that are streaming. Are yeah, one is above us and one is on the side. That they are streaming the video at the edge. Actually, they are, uh, yeah, let me, let me move so you can. If you come close to the screen, you will see your, yeah. Yeah, exactly, you're there. Yes. And so they are basically streaming all the information at the edge where we plug in our AI models and then distribute all in real time with low latency all the... Images here right now. Yeah, it's the here. Images. It's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just here. And, and basically distribute the information that could be used by the robot. In fact, if you look at the robot, now it's not going anymore in straight line between point A and B. It's between us. Yeah. yeah, but it's using the information to optimize the motion planning. So this is very powerful because now we have shown basically the three implications we have out of this. The first one, that with our smart edge, please feel free to go closer to the screen so you will see yourself. Uh, with our smart, this is you. With our smart edge, we are capable of making the robot much more intelligent because now they can see beyond the limitation of the sensors on board. They can see through obstacles. They can see through walls. Second point of view, if this is an AGV in a factory, the AGV knows the location of all the workers. So it can modulate the speed depending on the safety. So it can go super fast when there is no worker around or reduce the speed when there is probability there is some workers in, in the proximity. And the move case. Okay, so basically what you have here, you have real-time uh, edge AI from two cameras and sensor fusion for all the people that are detected in the two systems. Okay, and so this, is, uh, the, this support us the last and most important gain which is the possibility now of getting rid of the expensive sensors on the robot. Because the LiDAR costs up to 10, 15,000 euros. If you can get rid of that and use only proximity cameras and then 5G edge data, then basically we are enabled. Yeah, but exactly. Exactly, but we are enabling the next robotic revolution because we make a robot more affordable. Maybe not for big vehicles, but for AGVs, AMR, food delivery, street sweepers. So there is a billion robotic device that could be basically controlled from the edge. That's what we are basically showcasing here. 
And so what we are doing now, we are doing already... All these use cases will be applicable, obviously, within closed factory, you know, factories, closed doors, uh, that you will be able to position all these cameras. City, as well. Really? Yes. Okay. That's a, so, so you will be able to actually leverage... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we see. This is a block around Shista in Stockholm. Let me see, let me, let me go back here in the video. So actually we have also, so we have a delivery robot for, uh, for food delivery, self-driving. And we have also a vehicle, which is a moving sensor as well. Okay, and now we have a fixed sensor that 5G, all of these 5G connected, we stand alone, 5G stand alone. So two use cases we demonstrated is the cross, zebra crossing, which is one of the most difficult things for the robot, where we are fusing at our edge information from the car and the sensors. And so you see the physical world and the digital. So this is a moving camera for us. And then you have the ro all the information that are captured by in real time are streamed to the robot. And then the second one, we are really showing that we are integrated with the motion plan of the robot already, using our edge data. So the robot can already pre-break, even when, when we distribute the people, the robot is already breaking, even before seeing with its own sensors. So now this is a, a great validation for performances, and we are moving in the next level, bigger cars, buses, and then also in parallel factories, AGVs and IMRs, and then mission critical drones, because these are all very... These are a smaller scale, but the idea would be to get enough learning to then scale it up in a, in a larger portion and maybe partner in different parts of the world to really test it in different conditions as well. We are enabling net zero with Ericsson breaking the energy curve approach. We are bringing limitless connectivity to communities without cables. We are bridging physical and digital world with digital twinnings.